We are going today to Atemba Labs with Paul and Wigget. Atemba Labs is a laboratory for accelerator-based science where multidisciplinary research is carried out. It is situated near Cape Town in South Africa. For their nuclear physics research, they have been designing a new radiation detector. They are at the final stage of the assembling phase. They are getting ready for the first test. Radiation detection is about converting some or all the energy of a particle into an electronic signal. But ideally, um, the amplitude of the signal must be a true representation of the energy of the particle. There are various ways of converting ionizing radiation into electronic signals, for instance semiconductors, scintillation materials, as well as ionization chambers. Actually, what you need to know is that ionizing radiation basically ionizes. Ionization, like alpha particles, produces free electrons as it moves through solids, liquids, as well as gases. However, if nothing special is done, all of these free electrons will recombine to the atoms and all the information from that event will be lost. Our detector works essentially on the principle that once the particle has produced some electrons within the gas, an electric field separates the positive from the negative charges and transports them to the wires. It's basically the principle of drift chambers, a means of reconstructing the trajectory of particles. The ionizing electrons produced in a gas are separated from the ions using an electric field. The ions are rushing towards the negative potential, whereas the electrons are pushed towards the ground potential, where the active part of the detector is located. The detector basically consists of multiple field and signal wires soldered onto a multi-layer printed circuit board. Now the signal wires detect these tripped electrons as they move towards the PCB. The electrons are then detected by the principle of electronic avalanching. Wow! Electrons are now rushing in a devastating avalanche-like event. The signal wires are at positive voltage are alternating with negative voltage wires, which are called guard wires, so that when the electrons drifting towards the wires enter that space, they are pushed towards the signal wires that collect all the electrons. Based on this principle, which is, by the way, the technology that was employed by Sharpak et al. for the high energy physics detectors, Paul and Wigget worked with electronic engineers to put together a very compact PCB arrangement. The signal wire is here, and this would be the representation of the electric field, which is proportional to 1 over R, R being the distance of approach to the wire. So as you go closer and closer to the wire, the electric field goes to infinity. But as we limit it to finite size wires of 10 micrometer, this limits our electric field and obviously we try to use the thinnest wires that we can, 10 micrometer being about a tenth of the diameter of a hair. A millimeter divided by a thousand and then multiplied by 10 again. Yeah, 10 millionth of a meter, that's 10 micrometers. The final installation of the detector setup takes place in one of the experimental vaults situated on the east side of the facility. While operating, these vaults are controlled access radiation areas. Access is not permitted while ion beams are in use. Once the key of a specific vault is taken out of the interlock panel, the ion beam cannot be delivered to that specific vault. This ensures safe operation at all times. So basically we designed that vacuum chamber here to draw air molecules that produce vacuum. And then we fill the chamber again with the desired gas target. And the pressure controller keeps the pressure constant at all times within the chamber. This has two advantages. The first one is to keep the pressure constant. The other is to replace the gas continuously. With time, impurities such as oxygen or nitrogen build up and can degrade the gas quality. Now it's time to mount the PCB. The wires were soldered successfully and it has passed all the tests. This is a very delicate operation, now performed by Vichert. It is crucial that no wires break. With a tenth of the diameter of human hair, the least piece of material poking through would result in a major setback. A loose wire is prone to shorting the high voltage plane to a signal wire, which would damage the electronic system irreversibly. 
After two years of work, if the PCB gets damaged now, this would be the end of the experiment. So close to the final test. Look at those cables, are quite steep, huh? Oh no! In here! I know my people. I'll make a couple more, just in case. Oh yeah. Fortunately, Wigert has made a couple of spare PCBs. That was very wise of him. This saves the run. Nuclear physics investigations consist in bombarding target nuclide with projectiles. And the detector uh, we're busy developing now here uh, is aimed at detecting the particles pro produced in the nuclear reactions. The nuclear reaction involves two partners, a projectile and a target nucleus, so that in the collision, the nucleus of interest may be populated to a desired state. The beam impinges uh, along this axis on the target nuclide, and the reaction products are emitted within the volume in between the high voltage plane and the wires uh, in the active volume of the detector. This type of detector is actually called an ACTAR, which is short for Active Target Detector. It means that it uses the gas as the nuclear target, as well as the detection medium. The nuclear research facility of Atemba Labs consists of three cyclotrons, a number of iron sources and all the beamlines to produce and deliver iron beams. Once the GATO detector is fully operational, it will be used for basic nuclear physics research using energetic ion beams like protons accelerated up to 50% of the speed of light. But before running ion beams, you've got to test the detector. So basically we'll be using uh, a radioactive source which is thorium-228 which produces alpha particles with energies of about 5 to 8 mega electron volts. Paul and Wigert are now mounting the preamplifiers to process the tiny electronic signals and send them to the data acquisition system. The basic function of each preamplifier is to boost the microvolt signal that is incident from the detector PCB. This is done so that the signal may be fed with millivolt amplitude into the time to digital converters that forms part of the electronic data acquisition system here at the K600 magnetic spectrometer. Okay, so I guess we're almost ready for pumping. With many systems required for the experiment, there are also many problems that can occur, such as with the computers, the accelerators, or with the electronics. In this case, a leak was preventing the vacuum from going down to the desired pressure of 10 to the minus 5 millibar, which is atmospheric pressure divided by 1,000, again by 1,000, again by 1,000, and then multiplied by 10. Okay, we have the thing we can release the gas now. The gas is now rushing into the chamber. All of the gauges are looking okay, but now the high pressure cylinder seems a little low. If the gas is running out, the experiment yeah, is. It's okay. We have four more of those 200 bar bottles. Okay then. Okay, we heard. I mean, everything looks okay now. Okay, prof. Let's start at 1000 volts. I think it's a good plan. Now it is crucial that the high potential doesn't spark. The electric potential must be such that the electrons drift, but just below the breakdown voltage. Okay, we have to start to run here and see if it works. Okay, I can do that. Look at that, man! But it's working! It looks like it's working, Now, yeah. 20 counts a second. Look, each warrior is counting right, man. Yeah, man. Yes! The detector is responding. Vigert is worried that the counts are artificially produced. Indeed, it could be some electronic noise faking the signals. But Vigert, if you think it's artificial, uh, if you drop the voltage, guard wire voltage from 200 volts to 50 volts, the signal must be all gone. Right, okay, cool, signal is gone, you see, so it's all correlated. Put it back up. Right. Signal is back. Vigert is right, eh? Uh, the detector needs to be characterized in order to optimize the parameters. But so far, it is a great success. Yeah, so that development involved a whole lot of designing, mechanical designs, 
the chamber was optimized for maximum space usage. Yeah, we had to do some ground rule calculations, remember, so that we would see whether the electric field gradients aren't of a size that it would cause any sparks. The multi-layered PCB benefited a lot from all these layers we can stack on the top of each other. On our yeah, heads. because basically we had to make use of various different techniques. Uh, vacuum techniques, high voltage first supplies, gas controllers, you name it. Don't forget soldering wires that are so thin you can hardly see them. Yeah, that's why we've been designing some, some special tools. So that we could solder them. Do you mind if... No, no, it's fine. Go on. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, anyways, I think we we finished.